Hi and welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson we're going to be discussing the convergence or divergence of sequences. This is part of a video series on sequences and series. In the first video we discussed boundedness and monotonic. We're going to review those terms here as we go through. In order for a sequence to be bounded, it must be bounded both below and above. In other words, the range of values in the sequence must be approaching a number or have an endpoint. A sequence is bounded if the limit of the sequence exists. Let's take a look at a specific example. Suppose we had the formula to the n that represents the terms of our sequence. We're going to let n be the natural numbers, starting at 1, 2, 3, and so on. So if we plug in a 1 into our formula, we get 2 or 2 to the 1, and then our next term would be 2 squared and 2 to the third after that, and so on. So let's look at our terms. Just by looking at the terms of the sequence, you can see that the numbers are approaching infinity. If you decide to graph them, you can see very quickly that the numbers are going to approach infinity as well. So the limit of the sequence goes to infinity or it does not exist, which means that the sequence is unbounded. It is bounded below by 2, which is the lowest value that we can get out of the sequence. But since it's unbounded above, we consider it to be unbounded. If it's unbounded, then it's divergent. Also notice that this is an increasing sequence so it is monotonic. Remember that monotonic means it's either always increasing, always decreasing, or non-increasing, or non-decreasing. Let's take a look at another example. Suppose we had the formula negative 1 to the n times n that represents the terms of our sequence. Well, looking at the terms of the sequence, you can quickly see that these terms are alternating in sign, going from negative to positive, negative to positive. Let's see what happens to the terms of the sequence when we graph them. Well, you can see that the even terms are heading toward positive infinity, while the net odd terms are heading toward negative infinity. Let's list them out. The odd terms are represented by a with a subscript of 2n minus 1. This is just a way for us to call out specific terms of the sequence. So if we put a 1 in here, we would get the first term. If we put a 2 in for n, we would get out the third term. If we put a 3 in for n, that would be calling out the fifth term, and so on. All right, so we said that the odd terms are approaching negative infinity, while the even terms are approaching positive infinity, which tells us that this limit does not exist. If the limit does not exist, that means that the sequence is divergent. This one is unbounded both above and below. And this one is not monotonic because it's alternating from increasing to decreasing and so on. Between our first two terms, it increases. Between our second and third term, it's decreasing and then increasing again. Let's look at our ne next example. We have the limit as n goes to infinity of n over e to the n. n over e to the n is representing the terms of the sequence. We want to look at the limit to decide whether it's convergent or divergent. So looking at the terms of the sequence, in terms of e, it's not too easy to see what's happening. It's a little bit easier to see what's happening when you look at the numbers in decimal form. You know that these numbers will never um, be negative, but it does look like they're getting smaller and smaller, so they must be approaching zero. Let's look at the terms of the sequence on the graph. Now it's pretty easy to see that the numbers are approaching zero. Let's use Le Hopital's rule to evaluate the limit. Remember, you have probably used Le Hopital's rule before when you were working with functions and trying to find limits. So we're going to take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity of that quotient. We're going to do that exact same formula for sequences for our nth term. So our nth term is n over e to the n. Taking the derivative of the numerator, we get 1, and the derivative of the denominator is itself. Since e is a number that's greater than 1, e to the n is going to go to infinity as n goes to infinity. 
which means that our quotient is going to go to zero. So that means that this is bounded below by zero. Also, the highest possible number that we can get out of this sequence is 1 over e, which means that it's bounded above as well. So if it's bounded both below and above, it's bounded. The limit exists, which means that it's convergent. This is a decreasing function, and it is monotonic. All right, so let's review a little bit of what we did. If a sequence fails to have a limit, then it's going to diverge. If it is unbounded, it's divergent. If a sequence does not have a limit, then it will com I'm sorry, if a sequence does have a limit, then it is going to converge. Every convergent sequence is bounded. Okay, but that statement doesn't work in reverse. Just because a sequence is bounded doesn't mean that it's convergent. Let's look at an example of that. If we have the sequence of numbers negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, and so on, it is bounded below by negative 1 and above by 1, but the limit does not exist. So that means that this one is divergent. We need more than boundedness to decide whether something is convergent or not. It must actually be both bounded and monotonic, then it will converge. Let's look at some more um, examples. In this case, we have an alternating sequence represented by negative one half to the n. Looking at the terms of the sequence, you can see that they're alternating. If you look at the absolute value of the terms, you can probably see that those numbers are going to be approaching zero. Let's look at our terms of the sequence on the graph. For the odd terms, they're coming up from a negative one-half and heading towards zero. For the even terms, they're coming down from one-fourth and heading towards zero. So both the even and odd terms in this case are heading toward the same number, zero. Which means that the limit as n goes to infinity of negative one-half to the n is going to approach zero. So what we've done is kind of an absolute value test. We're looking at the absolute values of the terms of the sequence. If those numbers approach a specific number or have a limit that exists, then the sequence itself has a limit that is, exists. If they do not approach a specific number, then the limit does not exist and the sequence diverges. So in this case, Looking at the absolute value of 1 half to the n, that number is going to go to 0, so it converges. Let's look at a few more examples and decide whether they converge or diverge. So our first one is 2n over n plus 1. If we use Lahapital's rule to evaluate the limit, we would get 2. Since the limit exists, the sequence is convergent. For the next one, we'll use the absolute value test. Yeah. Taking the absolute value of it, we could just get rid of the negative 1 to the n. And then look at the limit of 3 plus n. Well, as n goes to infinity, so does 3 plus n. So this sequence diverges. For the next one, we're going to go ahead and expand out the net n minus 1 factorial over n factorial. So n minus 1 factorial means the product of all the numbers from 1 to n minus 1 and n factorial is the product of all the numbers from 1 to n. So everything's going to cancel out except the n in the denominator. So this fraction actually simplifies to 1 over n. So we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n. Since that goes to 0, the sequence converges. One more. We have 3 halves to the n minus 1. We want to see what happens as n goes to infinity. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. I rewrote it as 3 halves to the n times 3 halves to the negative 1. Remember, you would be taking this n and adding it to negative 1 to get your exponent here. So I just kind of broke it up. Since this is a constant, I'm going to rewrite it as 2 thirds. And then this is the only thing that's going to vary, 3 halves to the n. So I really want to find the limit as 3 halves to the n goes goes to, as n goes to infinity of 3 halves to the n. 
Well, since 3 halves is a number greater than 1, that's going to go to infinity. So this whole thing is going to go to infinity, which means that our sequence diverges. Alright, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math. Feel free to email me at any time if you have any questions.